Hello, hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening, good evening. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice. How yourself? I'm okay. I'm fine. Just landing. <laughs> Just after a uh, very busy week. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. How are you? Teacher, I have a situation. What happened? Uh, I'm already home, mm -hmm. but my brother, well, I had to get my brother from his work because his car is in the mechanical workshop. Oh, so I will have, have to, to leave him up. Mm -hmm, in the middle of the class. So all right. I'm well, sorry. It's all right. It's yes. all right. Okay. Well, everybody. Welcome to class. Yes, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're fine. I hope everything is okay. Well, we still have some people pending to get connected. So we're going to give a couple of minutes. Probably they will connect in a little while. Okay. Uh, this is the end of the third week already. So it's almost done. I hope you keep practicing, you keep working on the platform. I hope you have worked on the middle term exam already. So I was checking the platform. Well, I reported the, the situation you informed yesterday. Well, it, I had already done it as well, but there are, yes, there's still some, let's see, let me see, yes, some participants that need to work on the platform and complete the exercises. Remember, this is, uh, yes, all evaluated. So if you haven't been able to catch up, try to do it as soon as possible, okay? All right, today, what day is today? Today is the Spooky Friday, as someone says yesterday. <laughs> what day is today? Uh huh. Anyone? Anyone knows? Good evening. All right. Some people are driving home still. Be careful. Just be very careful. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, oh my goodness, I'm going to start um, yeah, sharing the screen so that we can get, give me one second, I just have some issues right here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Right now, yeah, let's get to the point of the presentation. So we're gonna be um okay. There we go. All right. This is the English for Work program, intermediate four. That's your level, and today's date is October the thirteenth. And <laughs> this is the class fifteen, just two classes after the class number thirteen as well. It's it's nothing to do with superstitions, but it's just coincidence it's just fun okay so i'm not very into that but it, it just calls my attention so um as i was mentioning this is the third week we're done and hopefully we are starting the fourth week and we are advancing very well on the content we are developing so the reminders for the class these are usually done at the beginning of the class to let everyone know um, the right attendance and time, the, the right time in that, of course, we have to do in every single uh, video conference, right? So we take attendance twice. So it's also requested from the participants to say present at any time. I mean, your names are called on the attendance list. So this is 
also another reminder that we usually do. And of course, how to handle the menu on Zoom platform for the volume, the microphone, the camera, the breakout rooms, and of course the relation, you know, the academic communication purposes that we use this platform for. All right. So I hope we're all fine. And of course we continue with this unit that talks about warehousing. We've been describing the fundamentals of warehousing management, identifying common issues related to warehousing processes, providing suggestions how to solve them. And of course, um, we're gonna be uh, developing the following exercises that are provided by the material that is given by InSupport. All right, so this is basically how we introduce the topics for today. Something very important is that we share, we discuss, we exchange ideas, because that way we develop self-confidence in communicating the language, speaking, uh, expressing, and even self or peer correcting because we're all learning, we are in this learning environment. So I do request participation because that's how we improve. All right, so let's have the attendance. First thing first, we go with, let me just change. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes for you to write something on the chat really quick. Say something to the class, like, hello, everybody. I hope you're fine. I hope you're okay. I hope you arrived home. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope your week was very meaningful, very productive. Whatever you want to write on the chat, that also gives me the idea of the people that are already present, okay? In case, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to identify who is who, because as I requested at the beginning, just very few people have photos and just, Fernando is with the camera on. So I just know what Fernando looks like, right? <laughs> but then uh, Manuel just on the photo, uh, Carlos and Francisco on the photo. So they might not look like that anymore. <laughs> so yeah, say something on the chat really quick. That way I can identify easily when I put all your names on the on the attendance list. Say something or a reaction or emoji. Well, if you're driving and you're gonna cause an accident, don't do it, but let's go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Abigail. Present. Hi. Atilio. Not yet. Elizabeth Stephanie. Present teacher. Hello. Emerson. I think he wrote, yeah, that he was going home. Yes. All right. That's easier for me. Fernando, of course. <laughs> yeah, you're wishing them a great weekend already in advance. <laughs> yeah, you already have plans. Uh-huh. Okay. No, not yet. How many brothers do you have for? Uh, one older brother. Just an older brother? Yes. How older? He's 27. Older than you? Two yes. years. Two years. Two right. years older. And that's it? You don't have yes, more? Yes, that's it. No more. <laughs> so it's just the two of you? Yes, that is enough. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Families are becoming smaller nowadays, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because my grandfather has 11 brothers. No way. My <laughs> yes. mom my mom had 11 as well. So they were and 12. He is the older one. Oh, my God. Really? Yes. My mom was like the third. Let me see. Wait a second. One, <laughs> two, three, four. No, she was like the fifth one. Mm -hmm. and, but She's she in the middle. Eight. So No, because she got 11. Oh. So they were 12. She got only men, they were nine. <laughs> Imagine. And then my mom had just four kids. I got an older brother and two younger ones. So I am mm -hmm. the only woman in the family. 
and you're four. Uh huh. But uh, but you know my brothers, my brothers got really excited when they got married. They have adding the older kids. I have twelve nieces and nephews. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> from three brothers. So they got one of my brothers got five. The other one got three, and the other one got let's say four. So it's a lot, a lot of kids when I visit yeah. them. And my brother said that he doesn't want kids. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's even smaller. <laughs> okay. That's that. Yeah, definitely. You know, generations have different, totally, yes. totally different points of view. That's great. All right. So we go with Francisco. Hazel. Nayet. Julissa. Carla, my goodness, it sounds like no one is there, <laughs> really spooky class today, <laughs> okay, oh my god, that reminds me of a meme I saw once, probably one of these days I'm going to share, okay, Luis Javier, no. Oh, yeah, I see his name on the screen. Not able to answer, Luis Javier. Luis Miguel. No. Magdiel. Present. Hi. Everything all right? Yeah, everything nice. is okay. Thank God. Manuel? Present. Hello, how are you? I am fine. Good. Marilyn? Present. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. I'm so fine, thank you for asking. All right, nice. Mario Ernesto? Present. Hello? Roberto Saul, Mahir, Ronan, 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 Mahir. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Victor, Mahir, Vidal. Walir. Present. Hello. And Carlos. Okay. All right. Uh, so we were studying yesterday part of the vocabulary development we were studying the connectors or the transitions that connect a result to the action, right? As a consequence, as a result, consequently, right? Therefore, so, and this connect definitely like cause and effect, right? Or the outcome of an action that provokes something, right? So I'm going to, give you the time for you to keep practicing on this topic to develop, let me see, a little bit of more confidence in vocabulary related to this. I'm not quite sure, let me see. Yes, I think that's this one. I'm not quite sure if, yeah, the first part is just an explanation. You're gonna find it really, really useful, really easy. And the second part, you have to, let me see. All right, wait a second. Yeah, you have to classify the, the connectors that are sequencing, cause, and consequences. And in the next part, we are going to have to write more than one possible. Yeah, we're going to have to write a connector of Result, and then, let me see, yes, you're just gonna choose one. 
probably you're not gonna get correct all of the parts, but the part that I consider is the one that you really have to work on is the last part. Let me see, the last three parts, four, five, and six. Probably the first parts are not really necessary, but if you wanna work on them, it will be okay. So let me share this link and then I'm gonna explain. Okay, let me see. Try to open it up and I'm gonna explain what I just said without sharing any screen, but for you to have as a reference. Okay, open it up. I'm gonna share the screen to let you know what parts I consider we should work on. So as I was telling you, the first part is the explanation in the examples, right? Because, because of, since, as, due to the fact that, so therefore, consequently, as a result, these are just examples. It's okay, you read them, okay? If you want to make this classification, which show sequence, which show cause, and which show consequences, it's fine. But if you don't wanna do that part, it's okay. You can skip it. If you want, you can work on this part. And if you don't want, it's also okay to skip it. But what I really care is that you connect this. The part four, the part five, part six, and that, I mean, these are the ones that I, I consider we should practice on. And then of course, when you check your grades, obviously your grades is not gonna be 10 out of 10, but at least you're gonna show, it's gonna show that you got this ones correct. All right, so start working on these, then we can, can come back and compare. This is just to refresh the vocabulary that we were building on yesterday, all right?
Hello, Fernando. Hi. Do you finish? No, yet. I, I, I was reading. Okay. Hi, Luis. Hi, Walid. Hi, Emerson. Did you finish the exercise? No, actually, no, I'm still driving, but I just want to talk it because I noticed that Luis is not talking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that you are like a listener, so uh -huh, yeah. I don't want to bother. Yeah, actually, I I, I put, I have in the phone the speaker mode because, you know, there's a lot of, of cops around the street. Oh. Okay. <laughs> trying to get, trying to get money. Mardiel, maybe you should do the exercise from the four to the last one. 
because of time. This one. From the four one. Number four. Yes. You already did the number three. No, uh, the teacher said that we should focus from the four and ah. then the five and six. Uh, choose choose the correct correct war. Yes. They banned the athlete as he had taken drugs. What do you think it is? Could be both. I think it is so. So oh. they panicked the athlete as he had taken drugs. So he had to return to return his gold medal because since doesn't have like the sense in the in the sentences. Okay. Number B. There, there is a, a cause. Mm -hmm. The cause, the cause is he has to return his gold medal because he's taking drugs. Okay, I get it. Number two, teams and country suffer so when the affect.
All right, everybody return. We're still waiting for Luis Javier and Emerson that are still in a break room. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, as I told you, it would be nice that if you have been able to complete all of the exercises, but the ones that I needed you to focus on was from number four to number six. So I'm just gonna read the examples. First, cause and consequences, cause we usually say cause instead of because, but that's not very formal. So I would recommend you to say because. <laughs> because expresses cause and is followed by a subject and a verb. I study because I wanted to be a nurse. Because of expresses causes and is followed by a noun or a gerund. Okay, uh, let's see. The roof was damaged because of the rain. Okay, since as due to the fact that express consequences and that followed by a subject and a verb, I didn't go to the beach since or as or due to the fact that it was raining. So express these consequences and is followed by a subject and a verb. I didn't have money, so I couldn't go to the trip. Therefore, consequently, as a result, for this reason, express consequences and normally go at the beginning of a sentence after a stop and followed by a coma. I don't like pasta. Therefore, I never go to Italian restaurants. Right. So after reading these examples, you were definitely going to get very familiar with the use of these expressions or these connectors. And we're going to go straight ahead to the number four. What is a circle? The correct alternative. They banned the athlete as he had taken drugs. Since or so, he had to return his gold medal. Which one did you choose? Uh-huh. So. So, because... Ah, as a consequence, right? So he had to return the gold medal. Teams and countries suffer when an athlete takes drugs because, because consequently the athlete can no longer compete. Because the athlete can no longer compete. Yes, taking drugs in a sport is cheating as or therefore it gives athlete an unfair advantage. As as it gives the athletes, as it gives athletes, sorry, an unfair advantage. Some performance enhancing drugs can cause heart diseases. So, or as they are very dangerous. So. So they are very dangerous. Consequently, or since professional athletes have to take regular blood tests, taking illegal substances is very risky. Consequently. Consequently, professional athletes. Consequently, or since, did you check it? Yes. Oh, so they they suggest consequently. In the or e. Mm -hmm. Yes. Goes mm, to me. Sounds more familiar since since they have to take regular blood tests. But if the page suggests consequently, what like it? maybe because it's like a paragraph that tells you like a story and it has like connection with the other sentence. Mm, oh yeah, because all the other sentences are linked mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. this one. Oh, yes. that makes sense. Okay, choose the connect the correct connector. So therefore, because or since many children don't get enough exercise, it's a good idea to have a sport at school. Since. Since. Many children don't get enough exercise. It's a good idea to have a sport at school. Yeah, actually, indeed. Regular exercise improves health. Consequently, as because a sports lesson should be part of our children's daily routine. Consequently. Consequently, 
children often have to work together in sports activities because since as a result, they learn to get along with each other. As a result. As a result, that's right. Physical activity helps people relax. Therefore, because of this, so a student should try to do, to, yeah, try to exercise every day. Therefore. Therefore. Yes. A sport teach children how to set goals and achieve them. For this reason, as or because, it can also help them develop good study skills. For this reason. For this reason, yes, sport teach children how to get how to set goals and achieve them. And very nice examples, actually. And the last one, number six, choose the most logical continuation. Many children get less physical activity since they spend so much time on the computer. More children will be overweight to a sport less than a week or not that. Those are just the only two stories. So many children get less physical activity since the most obvious one, right? <laughs> they spend so much time on the they computer. They spend so much time on computers. And, and this is getting worse. Yes. No good news. <laughs> Believe it or not. And the thing is that they spend so much time on the screens, not only computers, but cell phones, tablets, and other devices, but they are not learning important things. They are just fooling around. They're just watching memes and watching nonsense videos sometimes. Anyway. Let's see what happens with the with the humankind. <laughs> All right. Two sport lessons a week are insufficient as more children should have daily sport lessons as children should be exercising every day. Children should be exercising every day. Yes, and sometimes it's just one lesson per week. Yeah, I remember before maybe kids didn't have much sport classes but they used to do a lot of physical activities because they used to play outside they used to run they used to walk they used to uh, do a lot of other uh, physical activities part of their daily routines right swimming jumping climbing yes they were all, all already incorporated in their daily activities they do so sport lessons may be the only exercise as child gets. For this reason, many children don't do enough physical activity. They should be part of every school day. They ride their bikes to school. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the next one. But the numbers, I mean the letter C, sport lessons may be. The only exercise as a child gets for this reason. They should be a part of every school day. They should be part of every school day, not having online lessons anymore. <laughs> All right. Some children get regular exercises because they ride their bike to school. That's right. And the last one in the USA, about 17% of children are obese. Therefore, a school should have regular sport lessons to help them learn about their healthier lifestyle, or therefore they exercise too little and eat too much junk food. The first one. The first one. Yeah, schools should have regular sport lessons to help them learn about their healthier, healthier, healthier lifestyle. That's kind of hard for me. All right. Interesting. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yes, all of them, except the ones that we didn't do. But that's fine. That's all right. Okay. Let's see. Well, we're going to move on. Good.
All right, we're gonna get started with uh, making suggestions related to warehouse management issues. Making suggestions, of course. I mean, it would be nice that we have all this knowledge about doing housework management, but probably we are not very familiar with that sort of activities or work. So we're just getting familiar with some vocabulary, okay? What are some common issues related to warehouse management and how can these issues affect, sorry, how can these issues affect productivity? Of course, if there are issues, if there are problems, productivity is gonna be affected logically, right? Therefore, productivity is gonna be affected, okay? So let's think about it. Suggestion related to warehouse management issues. And what are some common issues related to warehouse management? I think we already mentioned one of this class, right? Mm -hmm. Lack of communication, getting short of staff or personnel, not having the right equipment, or not having the right software, uh, mechanical problems with their vehicles, so many things, right? So how can these issues affect productivity? Well, a lot, okay? So we're going to follow the examples and the exercise that is given here. Imagine you are a warehouse manager. Oh, wow. And you are experiencing problems. Uh, no, wow, no, no, no. Okay, you are experiencing problems with inventory counts and misplaced products. Which of the following issues would you solve first? Rank the issues from one, the least affect productivity, and five, the, the one that affects the most productivity. Okay, number one is the, let's say, the issue that doesn't affect too much. But number five is that issue that affects productivity a lot, right? So discuss the ranking with the partners. Inaccurate receipts and purchase order lack of communication between employees, lack of cooperation between departments, time management, warehouse space and organization. Think about this with the ranking from one, the one that, that affects less, and number five, the one that, that affects more. And then we're gonna discuss with our partner, all right? You have a couple of minutes to think about it, to write your ranking, and then we come with the discussion.
Hi, good so evening. Anyone have like a uh, order? Yes, what is I... most what is more easy to start with the less affect productivity or most affect? Mm, for me at least it was more easy to classify this beginning with the most with the five the most affect and the, the yes level. you're right I just start with the least affect productivity. When can you put as the least affect? Yes, so for me, the number one to me is warehouse space and organization. Because you can contact with an outsourced company that take care about space and organization. So you can leave that point to, to someone else. That's an nice point i put the, that one as the most effect because uh, i i think that you can have all of that but if you don't have a space or you have like for your devote yeah i know i don't know how to say that mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can you can produce anymore or you can send things to the warehouse so I, mm -hmm. I, for me at least i put that in warehouse space and all say but yeah. i don't i don't work in that hurry yes to me this this exercise depends on the way you think it is to me it's not not is like only one one way to do it for me yeah that's right it's like depends on the point of view of, of each one That's true. What do you put as number two? As number two, I put time management. Because I know that the time is important for all that kind of companies. But seeing or looking the other points, I the other points are more important than than this to me. Number three, what do you put? Inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. And number four, lack of cooperation between the department and the most affects productivity. Productivity to me is lack of communication between employees because with the lack of communication with, with employees, it came the lack of cooperation between the department and then as a consequence, there is the inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. It makes sense. You put it like that, it makes sense. But I don't know what can say the others.
Hi. Done? I think so. All right. Let's see. The easiest, the, the issue, the affects the least. Which one do you have? To me is warehouse space and organization. Okay. So this one would be number one. Mm, yes. All right. I mean, this can be different, can differ as your opinion, right? Number two. I put time management. Time management. And of course, the ranking will be defended with your opinions, right? With your argument. Why you say this is number one, why this is mm -hmm. number two. Number three. It is inaccurate receipts and purchase order. In uh, inaccurate. This one, inaccurate. Receipts and purchase orders, right? Number four. Lack of cooperation between departments. Lack of cooperation between departments and lack of communication between employees. This would be number five. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Fernando, since we have written the ranking that you consider according to your point of view, what affects the least to the one that affects the most, why would you say that order? In few words, in summary. My my reasons. Yep. Uh, first, I put num in number one warehouse space and organization because we can contract like a a trust company that take cares about that. Mm -hmm. That provides more space and organizes. Yes. All right. Then I start thinking about the 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 most effects, mm -hmm. and I think that if exists like a lack of communication or bad communication between your employees, you can start like a waterfall. Mm -hmm. I mean, or it's consequence. Uh -huh. Yes, and one of the consequence can be the lack of cooperation between department mm -hmm. and inaccurate receipts and purchase orders and then the time management. Okay. Well, good. Nice. Is anybody else willing to express his or her points? Why this or that um, ranking? Anyone else? Remember that right now you are warehouse managers and you are experiencing problems with inventory, counts, misplaced products. So how would you solve them? Mm -hmm. Anyone else wants to express? His or her ideas? No. Okay. Let me just make a pause. It's time for the communicative activity. I want you to get in small groups because it's about well, let me let me share the link first because otherwise you won't get familiar with it. Well, you're going to be opening 
some boxes. And think about the possible answers you can give according to what the boxes suggest. Okay, think about it. Okay, open them really quick so that you can just get an idea or think about. Because at the time that you open the boxes, it's supposed that you can express it spontaneously, right? So the exercise is called tell us about the time. Tell us about the time when you exercise or tell us about the time when you uh when tell us about the time when someone said something really nice to you all right so think about and talk about because the idea is that you can kind of recall this memory and express in a spontaneous way so i'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to open the boxes and start thinking and getting the idea of what to talk about Okay. All right.
Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Mm, do you want to talk to any anything in the in, uh, any topic that was in the link of the teacher? Or I'm have... watching. I'm watching the the link. Mm -hmm. Is this is this a game? Uh -huh. and it's like you supposedly you have to talk about the, about that. You have the box. Mm -hmm. You can open okay. a box. It's like a topic, and you want. And we have to okay. talk about. And you have to have to tell a story about that. I going to share. Okay. Let me know if you can see. Yes, I can see. I think uh, there are two number with the same situation or no? No, no, it's like topics that we can talk about. Uh, mm. Do you have a time is you go Uh, sir, did you have a time that you got very sick? Mm. Yes, I did. I was sick the last week. Mm. What do you have? A flu? Yes. Because, uh, oh, I see. Cough. Everybody getting the flu. <laughs> yeah. And the other one, like this, you stumble and fall down in public. Have you ever? You know, actually, no. <laughs> I listen in in a I long can't. time. In yeah. a long time, I have. So. I remember that in my job, we were, uh -huh. I have a, a partner. We enter together. We are about the same age. And we have to do surveys around all the country. And she fell down and broke her leg. And uh -huh. yes, and, and she can continue. But uh, all the supervisor was, were, were like, uh, they, because they, it was for first time doing surveys around the country. So uh, the supervisor, because she, uh, they see that my partner broke her leg, they were like very cautious with me, like uh, saying like, well, uh, it's room down or uh, don't gonna fall or something like that. They were like worried about me falling also. Um, yeah, that's good. In my case, I don't remember exactly moment, but I think uh, when I was a child, I I I fell down in the school in front of the 
all of the all of the partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, um, when you are a kid, everything, everyone laughs. <laughs> it helps me. Mm. It helps some. Maybe. I mean, there was a friend that that just broke with his girlfriend and well I have to to be with him in that that process. Mm, or maybe when I give a someone a, a quarter for the boss. <laughs> um, I help uh, help uh, a co-worker in his job because he he can he can finally uh, at the end of the day and I had to I had to help help his mm -hmm. help him. Yes, I I had a coworker that um I she was like I mean it was it's like her contract uh, finished uh -huh. and she was looking for a job and they and and when she um and and she was looking for a job and in um in a place. She need to do a test mm -hmm. and help her with, with, with something in that in that test. In the thing that I can help her, I I help. Uh, I think that she doesn't get the, <laughs> the job <laughs> even with the help. Uh -huh. Did you recommend it? Recommend it. Hmm? Did you recommend it? Recommend it? Uh, no, it's uh, more like like um, like helping because she has to to do a, a little uh, a small research. So mm -hmm. I search for some things and explain them, explain her how to do how to calculate something that she need to calculate. Mm -hmm. Also to right. to review what she has done. That's right. Mm, but uh -huh. but mm, I mean I help her, but I think that she didn't, she didn't get the job even with the help. So I don't know if I help her. <laughs> what number do you want? Mm -hmm. mm, 25. 25. You loaded <laughs> Like uh, you have a tag, a tag of the love. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, it happened things in the office and uh, and it's like there are like uh, I don't know how I, there is a there are two coworkers that are like the relationship is like a big sister with a small sister mm -hmm. so like discuss like that and I, I I don't know and sometimes they say things that are at least I I, I found funny so I also uh, laugh with with them.
there is some sometimes uh, that uh, I I I can't stop stop loud it when when I when I I am loud and really hard and you can stop 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 the loud. <laughs> It is, it, I don't know, but it's difficult. And yeah. I, it may be, I, uh, sometimes uh, there are uh, partners around, around me or around the, and she, they, they don't know what, uh, what, uh, or because I'm, I'm louder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's see another thumb. Fourteen. Okay. You felt prone. Maybe when my sister graduated from high school. Yeah, I was very proud of her because she won like recognition in the school for her performance. First place. Yes. Yeah, academic performance as, and as a, a student of I I, um, I don't remember what well the name of the the hour that they gave them they gave they give her but yes it was like a special moment because <laughs> she she has some rough time. In high school, so at least she will she get to finish that. I I I have a best friend, and he has to he has to left to other country, uh, U.S. U.S.A. And when he he gets. He gets in the U.S. I felt mm -hmm. I felt proud of of for 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 his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <clears throat> Well, no, it's, we'll see another number. Bob out that 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, we're all back. I'm going to share. Yeah, this time I'm not going to ask you to share what you discuss, what you describe, what you talk about. I know there were many situations, so it was not possible for, ev I mean, for everyone and for all the 
situations to be described in your own experiences or memories, but it was good to have interaction, all right? So let me just go on. And right after this activity that you just discussed about the must, I mean, the issues that would affect the most in the list, we have this other second. Okay, this is part of improving and enhancing vocabulary, mm -hmm. building vocabulary, label the warehousing alternative to their corresponding definitions. Okay, so we have drop shipping. Give me one second, please. Let me just get the spotlight. Okay, drop shipping, public warehouse, private warehouse, direct shipping, and contract warehouse. Then you have the definitions. So as you made up nice, I'd like you to uh give it a try, read, try to relate the vocabulary to the definitions because basically in a definition you have the concept, but in a paraphrased way. So this is a method of delivering goods from the suppliers to the customer directly. It is operated as an independent business offering a range of service, services so, such as storage, handling, and transportation on the basis of a fixed or a variable fee. Warehouse owned by a third party entity, these warehouses provide a specialized service in addition to allowing the client to store goods. The retailer does not keep goods in stocks, but instead transfers customers' orders and shipment details to the manufacturer. Another retailer or a wholesaler who then ships the goods directly to the customer. And it is a storage facility that is open to the general public while this kind of warehouse is used by private individuals. They are also used by companies of a small to medium size to assert their goods safely. So you have to read and try to drag what the correct definition is according to the concept. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes for you to give it a try, and then we're gonna come up and share what the right answers are, all right?
All right. Here we go. The methods, the warehouse alternative, and the corresponding definitions. Let's do the easy ones. Let's say you say, this is a method of delivering goods from the suppliers to the customer directly. You say, no, I don't know that. It is operated as an independent business offering a range of service such as storage, handling, and transportation on the basis of a fixed or a variable fee. Oh, I don't know that. Okay, maybe you say that. But then try to look for an easy one, okay? For example, you say drop shipping. What is drop shipping? Public warehouse, private warehouse. Oh, you say, oh, it's a storage facility that is open to the general public. Mm -hmm. A que le suena? Public, right? While this kind of warehouse is used by private individuals, they are also used by companies of a small to medium size to storage their goods safely. ¿Cuál podría ser ese? Mm -hmm. Can that be a public warehouse? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So in this type of exercises, the recommendation is that you do the easiest one. So that at the end you have the probably the, the hard ones, right? Okay. Let's go from the bottom to the top. The retailer does not keep goods in stocks, but instead transfer customer orders to shipment details to the manufacturer, another retailer or a wholesaler, who then ships the goods directly to the customer. What could be this one? Uh -huh. Drop shipping. Drop shipping. Basically, it's just pick and drop, right? Okay. So they do not keep it, right? The retailer does not keep goods in its stock. Warehouse owned by a third party entity. Remember the third party logistics, right? These warehouses provide a specialized service in addition to allowing the client to store goods. That would be? Contract warehouse. Contract warehouse. There is a type of a warehouse. Warehouse owned by a third party. Yeah, I have some doubt in that, uh -huh. that one because I also think that it can be private warehouse. A private warehouse. I think it's more accurate to say a private warehouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because of the space, right? It is operated as an independent business offering a range of services such as storage, handling, and transportation of the basis on a fixed or variable fee. Contact warehouse? Yeah, I think this is the contract warehouse. And the last one, this is method of delivering goods from suppliers to the customer directly. That has to be the direct, direct, mm -hmm. direct shipping. The direct shipping. All right. Good, 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 good. Okay. So I hope you have taken notes so that you don't forget. Okay, let me just close this. And I got this something for you. Let me see. Let's 
Sorry, sorry, give me a second. I'm not quite sure I need to share the audio as well. Okay. Logistics. Inbound logistics is the way materials and goods are brought into a business. It includes the steps to source, order, transport, receive, put away, store, and manage incoming supplies. It also includes reverse logistics, which moves goods back to a company from customers for returns, defects, repair, and refurbishment. Without effective inbound logistics processes, businesses often suffer from high operating costs, uncertain delivery dates, and unpredictable lead times, which makes it hard to maintain ideal inventory levels in an efficient and productive warehouse. To optimize inbound logistics, businesses should consider strengthening supplier relationships to yield benefits like better terms, reduced lead time, cost savings, and a sense of security during market fluctuations, taking control of inventory with real-time visibility using an inventory management system, streamlining warehouse receiving, put away, and picking processes with a warehouse management system, automating and optimizing freight operations through a transportation management system, and combining less than truckload or LTL shipments with a third-party logistics provider to minimize shipping costs. When a company has a successful inbound logistics strategy, it helps the organization operate faster, leaner, more agile, and cost efficiently. All right, because of the volume, I'm going to play it again so that everybody can watch. Hey, did you like what you learned? Sorry. Let me just wait a second, wait a second. I just need to go back. Mm Give me a second, please. No, here we go. What is inbound logistics? Inbound logistics is the way materials and goods are brought into a business. It includes the steps to source, order, transport, receive, put away, store, and manage incoming supplies. It also includes reverse logistics, which moves goods back to a company from customers for returns, defects, repair, and refurbishment. Without effective inbound logistics processes, businesses often suffer from high operating costs, uncertain delivery dates, and unpredictable lead times, which makes it hard to maintain ideal inventory levels in an efficient and productive warehouse. To optimize inbound logistics, businesses should consider strengthening supplier relationships to yield benefits like better terms, reduced lead time, cost savings, and a sense of security during market fluctuations, taking control of inventory with real-time visibility using an inventory management system, streamlining warehouse receiving, put away, and picking processes with a warehouse management system, automating and optimizing freight operations through a transportation management system, and combining less than truckload or LTL shipments with a third-party logistics provider to minimize shipping costs. When a company has a successful inbound logistics strategy, it helps the organization operate faster, leaner, more agile, and cost efficiently. Well, these are some of the concepts we have been talking about, okay, about inbound and outbound logistics. So these are processes that take place at a warehouse. So I found this uh, material pretty useful. 
for us to have a clear idea of how the processes are carried out in definitely in the warehouses. That also involves the logistic because they have to move from the suppliers or from the customers in or out from the warehouses. So I think this is what we're gonna be concluding on and I hope everyone is doing great. Let's have the last attendance. Abigail. Atilion, Elizabeth, well, Elizabeth was not here today, actually. Emerson. Emerson, teacher. Ah, you were here. Yes, but I was working. Oh, sorry, because I hadn't heard you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I thought you got an emergency. I my name, teacher, and present. Oh, okay, thanks. All right. Let me go back to the list. All right, Fernando had to leave. Francisco, Hazel, Julissa, Carla, Luis Javier, Present. Luis Miguel, Magdiel, Manuel, Marlin, Present. Mario, Roberto, Esaú, <laughs> Ronel, Víctor, Vidal, Guadir, y Carlos. Present. All right. Bingo. Let's see, some people reporting on the chat. Oh, yes, Francisco, Manuel, and Victor. I mentioned everyone. Did I skip anyone? No? It's all right. Okay. I hope you have reached till the end of this session safely. I hope you have a wonderful time during the weekend, and I hope to see you all on Monday. See you Monday, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.